Welcome to part four of our Start Dreaming tutorials. This time round, I'll show you how to select and group your creations, as well as how to scope in and out of groups. Ah, I see Cuthbert has managed to get himself stranded again. Connie, how do you put up with him? What a silly cube. Well, with Connie's help, we can get him out. And at least someone left behind a block for us to use. Remember how to repeat clone blocks to create a bridge? Well, let's do that again. Move your view side onto the block and the gap. Hold L1, then gently grab the block with R2. Move it with the motion sensor function to create a clone. Just like last time, let go of L1 while still holding R2. Then press the directional buttons to make more clones. If you rotate the first block a little before you clone it, you can make an arch. Use L2 to make the first block angle up slightly. Then make the clone angle down. Press the left directional button to repeat clone and the clones will line up to make an arch. Amazing, right? Let's quickly test that in play mode. Looks great. Switch back to edit mode, rewind the scene and go to the next step of the tutorial. You probably noticed that all the blocks, the original one as well as its clones, were all selected automatically after cloning. You can tell when things are selected because they have an animated dashed outline. But after switching back and forth between play and edit modes, everything was deselected. So, let's select them again. All you have to do is hover your imp over one of the blocks and press X. There's the outline again. Now do the same to the rest until the whole bridge is selected. See how each block has its own outline, with a double line where they meet. That's because they're still individual elements. You can deselect them one at a time with X, but it's much quicker if you deselect them all at once with circle. Give it a try. There's also a faster way of selecting multiple objects. Just select one as before, but this time keep X held down. Now move your imp to select the others. Better than selecting them one at a time, right? So much faster. The great thing about having multiple objects selected is that you can manipulate them as if they were one object. For example, if all the blocks are selected, you can clone the bridge sideways to create a double bridge. Plenty of room for Connie to cross it without falling off the edge. Try it out in play mode. Once Connie's across the gap, go back to edit mode and move on to the next step. You know, this bridge would be really useful to help Connie cross to the next platform. Use X to select all the blocks again. If we're going to use this bridge a lot, we can make it into a group. That way it will behave like a single element and you won't have to keep selecting all the blocks. Notice the menu that appears at the side of the screen when you have one or more objects selected. That's a context menu which means all the options it gives you will depend on the situation you're in. In this case, all the options are about selected objects. Look for the plus sign, which is the icon for the group button. The number next to it tells you how many objects you have selected. You can use this button now to turn all of those blocks into a group. Ta-da! The bridge is now a single element. You can tell because it has one outline around it, instead of one around each block. And if you look over at the context menu, you'll see the group button now says ungroup, in case you ever need to undo a grouping. But we still need it to help Connie now, so let's clone this bridge and place it between the second and third platforms. 
Just like before, hold L1 and grab the bridge with R2 to clone it. Remembering to let go of L1 as always. Hmm, we don't need to test the bridge to see it's not going to get Connie to the third platform. But don't worry, we'll fix that in the next step when you're ready to move on. Our bridge needs a little work if it's going to reach the next platform, which is the perfect opportunity to learn a new technique, scoping in. Scoping in means you can jump into a group and edit its contents individually without having to ungroup it first. And since you can only edit things inside the group, you don't have to worry about messing up anything outside it. Let's give it a try now. Select the bridge with X if it isn't already. Then, see the Scope In button near the bottom of the context menu. Ah, it's showing you a shortcut for it. L1 and X. So, hover over the bridge group, hold L1 and press X. And now you're scoped in. We can now edit all the parts as if it wasn't a group. If you really want to focus on just the group, you can hide everything else in the scene. Just select the eye icon in the context menu to hide and unhide the rest of the scene. There's also a scope out button in the top right corner. This is how you exit groups. Try scoping out now. Select the button with X or use the shortcut L1 and circle. That's it. Now scope back in again so we can fix the bridge. Just hover over it, hold L1 and press X. I think what Connie needs to reach the next platform is a staircase. So use the move and clone tool to create a new one. Once you've built the staircase, test it in play mode to make sure Connie can make it across. When you're happy with it, switch back to edit mode, rewind the scene and move on to the final step of the tutorial. Have you created a wonderful staircase? I'm sure you have. Connie just needs a little more help before she can save poor old Cuthbert from himself. Luckily, you can now simply clone your staircase group to reach the final platform. Use the clone shortcut L1 and R2 to copy the staircase group to the last platform. Don't forget to let go of L1 once the clone has been created. That's how handy groups are. If you select the group, you'll even see in the context menu a button to save the group as a new element. Saving a group as an element means you have it to use in other scenes or to share in the Dreamiverse. Now that you've mastered selecting and grouping, I'll leave you with a thought to ponder. Did you know you can also make a group inside a group? With that, I will let you experiment. Once you're happy you've mastered selecting, grouping and scoping, you have just one thing left to do. Go into play mode and take Connie and Cuthbert to the exits.